tell us a little bit about your company, Nanotronics. I understand that you make products that are revolutionizing the manufacturing process. When you say revolutionizing, really manufacturing has not changed in 50 years. I mean, we think that it has, but Nanotronics takes modern um, artificial intelligence, automation, robotics, and advanced imagery in order to change the way things are being built. Well, you know, when people think manufacturing, they picture assembly lines, but you've created these high-tech building blocks that you just uh, mentioned uh, for what's called a smart factory. Tell us what that really means. It requires teaching machines to do what humans' desires are. This is very different than just putting robots into a factory. Robots in a factory are like replacing a human with something stronger. This is different. It's keeping humans focusing on something that is creative. Well, I understand that your company, Nanotronics, is a key player in building the first smart factory here in New York. In fact, at the Brooklyn Navy Yards, which many years ago was a huge shipbuilding uh, facility. Why did you decide to invest in this rundown, low-income Brooklyn neighborhood when you could have gone anywhere in the country? I like the idea, and I care about the idea, that the Brooklyn Navy Yards is located within New York City. New York City has a, it's the financial capital, it's the cultural capital, but certainly I was motivated to be a part of a community, and for that community to you know, provide new ways for us to think. We have partnerships with Meg Revers College, which is very close to us. We have partnerships with a lot of the high schools. Uh, and partnerships with the city and state. You have been hiring of uh, people from local community colleges, as you mentioned, uh, kids in trade schools, but why did you take this approach? I think that there is a philosophical misunderstanding of what it means to work in science and technology. It's incredibly creative, exciting, and does not require the MIT degree. And so we see with whether it's interns uh, from these places or whether it's new employees, you see, really a huge amount of our future applicants are coming from word of mouth that, you know, this is as exciting as working in any other place and you should not be intimidated. And that ripple effect is really enormous. Um, we, we do believe in this kind of mentorship model and uh, the people that work at the company are not just driven by the education that they have at the school but the education they get through asking questions and learning with the scientists, engineers, production people at the company. I think many people would say about Nanotronics that it's a company that's doing good and trying to make the world uh, a better place. What's been the key lesson that you've learned through this experience so far? I've learned that I don't have to directly deal with every small issue to make the planet a better place. If it's at the core of who we are as a company, it's why we started the company, was to build the future of industrialization and the future products that will lead to cleaner environment and better access in general. That if that's at the core of it, then you don't, you don't have to push it on a regular basis. That's, that's a really nice thing to know that it's just built into culture. So if um, other companies or maybe entrepreneurs want to copy what you've been doing, what would you tell them? I think that it does play to the ability to not think about the future as the time to do something. Um, there's enormous possibilities right now that have these positive impacts. You can do it in small labs and accomplish things that right now we think can only be accomplished at very large companies. But we're not even seeing those happening so much in very large companies. So the, the, the really the possibility of getting over stagnation, getting to the next level of achievement, is the barriers to entry are much smaller than people think. And I would love that message to get through.